All right, another episode of NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Himador. Okay. Let's go. All right. Uh, excited to be here, be back. Uh, we have a, a star-studded show today. We're speaking uh, to two members of the, the NYCFC more the front office, boots on the ground, city in the community, right. everything, all right? This is how we're going to get in everyone's good graces by forcing them to be on our show <laughs> and interacting one-on-two. Two with us. <laughs> uh, so yes, our, our first dual guest uh, show. Uh, so we're excited to, to talk to these guys. Obviously, it's going to be Paul Jeffries and Matt Goodman. Uh, 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 yes, you know, pe- people very much involved in helping NYCFC grow. These are people with an, with acronyms before their names, so you know they're important, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the directors, COOs, and uh, right? uh, you know. Well, so- Christian and I are the chief giggle officers. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting uh, role. I, 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 is there much upward mobility in this position? <laughs> this is the this is the peak, baby. What you talking? About? We made it, baby. I- okay. <laughs> uh, so yes. Uh, also, before we get the show started, I want to give a, a, a shout out to uh uh, uh yeah. Ever, uh who recently just uh got the, the acl surgery he posted uh, on uh on social media uh th- that day one at the beginning of the recovery uh has started and uh we're wishing him all, all the best uh, of course can't wait to see him back out there yeah, that's all we want. Okay, so uh, so let's get started. So on Wednesday, uh, the club celebrated the fourth year of the New York City Soccer Initiative. So let us start uh, by talking to Paul Jeffries. Let's take an inside look. Which, by the way, presented by Adidas. All right, shout out to Adidas, yo. Oh, this is exciting. One of our guests are here. This is the executive director and board member of City in the Community Foundation. Uh, This is exciting. Uh, Has been working with City in the Community and uh, NYCFC previous since 2014. Uh, This this dude's an OG. Okay. Okay. (laughs) He put the he put the M and the E in NYCFC, and I know you're thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> those letters aren't there. But just don't gloss look, over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't look into it. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I excited about uh, our next uh, guest. I mean, this is uh, you know when it comes to you know I, I'm I'm from Brooklyn, and when I you know get to talk to people that are are, are doing uh, the work. You know, boots on the ground, you know, cleats on the ground, right. even <laughs> <laughs> just building soccer in this city and in this country uh, is probably best to talk to this guy right here yeah. and wait till you hear his Brooklyn accent. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only put your hands together for Paul Jeffries, everybody. Hey, Paul. Hey, Cooligans. Thanks for having us. What an introduction. Uh, <laughs> I want to pick you up on that Brooklyn accent. I know you might not believe this, but actually um, I'm from England, but... I was, Ooh. I um, pledged my allegiance to the United States on Tuesday and officially became a U.S. citizen. Well, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> okay. We need, we need, we need uh, you know, to class it up a little bit. So, so thank you for joining the team. Right. Thank but we also... Me. Thank you for paying taxes and thank you for voting. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Okay. I, vote. I missed out on the voter registration. Uh, okay. You'll All get right. him we'll next time. Do everything you can to bring the NHS here, uh, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what, <laughs> what am I, what am I, th- one of the things I was reading when I was uh, uh, sort of reading through your bio a little bit, it says that you've been in the New York, New Jersey area for over 15 years now. Uh, and I can only imagine you know what your how startling it must have been when you first tried to build the world the sport of soccer and walk up to a random new yorker and be like yo i want to i want to build the football and they're like yo what you gonna fix the jets you know what i mean <laughs> it was probably a bit of a different experience <laughs> what what has it been like what what are some of the changes you've seen over these last 15 years yeah i know I, it's been actually 20 20 years i've been in the u.s i was in georgia playing soccer down in georgia i left um I was playing for a club in Oldham Athletic full time, got injured and offered a scholarship to go play in rural Georgia. Now that was a culture shock, you know, yeah. going out into, um, well, <laughs> uh, what do I say about that? Yeah, um, no, yeah well, they, they were like, well, your accent, where are you from, Maine? Yeah. Y'all, they said, Y'all talk funny. I talk funny. <laughs> yeah. I understood two of the letters you just said. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, a big part of, of me and I had a little stint outside of soccer. I was a stockbroker for a short while on Wall Street, but I got back into the game. I felt that's where I could really bring value 
Um, it gave me so much, but you know, I was um, setting up programs at recreation departments, um, uh, coaching um, kids from young as three up to college, and it just hit me. I was I was doing all this work and effort, and there was so many kids that didn't have access to the game. And this idea of poaching kids, it was just so strange to me. We're, we're fighting over kids, yet there's like so many kids out there who don't have access to the game. And so that's that's what, you know, my calling became into um, really seeing what I could do about that. Okay. And, awesome. and just, and just to, you, maybe you can speak a little to, uh, you know, as far as seeing some of the changes, but what, what are the, the, the challenges themselves, right? When it comes to, uh, you know, like we, Alexis and I, we were both at, uh, one of the, uh, mini pitches, uh, the, one of the unveilings, the one in, in Queens, mm-hmm. uh, and it was, it was just amazing to see that happen, right? And, and to see how happy the children are that they get to play and, and there's an open space and a free space uh, to play the game. What are the, the, the challenges when it comes to just building these pitches? What, what, it, it, you know, yeah. even from as a, as a New Yorker, I'm like, well, how do you navigate kind of, you know, and negotiate kind of doing all these things. Yeah, because I imagine you get off the train and you're like, where the hell are we going to put a pitch? <laughs> <laughs> well, funny you say that. So actually back in, when was this? Uh, I got involved in an inner city program. I was working at dusk and uh, my first sessions were out in Chinatown, right? They were in Chinatown delivering, bringing soccer into the schools, trying to expose the kids, the gym teachers to Give them football. Give them football. Kids love this game. Yeah. Believe me, yeah. the game is the is the best um, teacher for kids. And you just need to roll it out, and they're engaged and um, share the joy of the game. And that's what I was doing. This and I had um, volunteering for the U.S. Soccer Foundation, and there was an organization called the Urban Soccer Collaborative, which was a coalition of soccer organizations that were trying to help give other organizations tools to build the game in the inner city. And then I reached out to Manchester City. Um, Because they always had an amazing community program, well-respected, a really caring, compassionate club. And they were on tour. And I said, look, um, uh, they go, what do you need? What do these communities need? And we said, they need a soccer pitch. Um, I was that time living in Jersey City, and I would go up to East Harlem, pick up these kids from the school, walk 45 minutes over Randall's Island Bridge to do a session. It'd go dark at five, and I'm taking the kids back and then waiting for the kids to be picked up. And I'm back in Jersey. It just wasn't sustainable, right? And um, so I just said, why don't we do a a pitch? And we built a rooftop soccer pitch at East Harlem in Lexington Academy. And to this day, 10 years on, we have one of the kids still involved um, who actually um, was the inspiration behind Power the Vote campaign. But meaning to say, we had this project, this rooftop soccer pitch, very innovative, very creative. There is a lot of space. But we said there is space in York City. It's just not activated. So you look at these black tops, these... um, these dead spaces, well, you can play soccer anywhere. You don't need much. So we just um, felt this works. How do we bring in partners to scale this? And um, the case is pretty compelling, right? Give kids a safe space to play, and it can do so much in the community. And I think we've seen that um, impact and the feedback from schools, principals, um, the Department of Education, parks, other community leaders They really see the value in this, not just about whether these kids are playing soccer and become first team players, but really as a as as a way of bringing people together and and addressing some of the issues around um, child obesity and all all kinds of stuff. So um, but that's right. As as to the logistics of getting this done, you know, that's not easy. And we've got great partners at the Mayor's Fund who have helped us navigate some of those um, bureaucratic obstacles. So. Okay. I can only well imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I did also want to ask you about was uh, you you have been uh, with the, the club since the beginning, with NYCFC since the beginning. And one of the things you did, you got to be uh, a, a a you were in a commercial with uh, with several Manchester City oh, uh, players. And this is amazing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's literally like Joe Hart, Sergio Aguero, uh, uh, Guy Cligy, like everybody's <laughs> in this. And, and uh, juggling, is, it's similar to like a, a, a Joga bonito commercial and you're in there doing you know some keepy uppies some tricks some techers uh what was that like putting on a show in the sky in the (laughs) high line (laughs) i want to qualify this right i was in a suit i didn't own a suit i had my sister's wedding suit um from i don't know 50 years ago i think there's some comments that (laughs) i was from an alfred hitchcock movie or something but but i was in a suit and shoes and you know man city players uh with these like 
custom tailored sneakers doing the job. I had to do it in my <laughs> shoes and this suit in the peak of summer. Um, <laughs> with company looking down your neck saying, come on. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. better get it in one take, you know? <laughs> what, did you, what did you learn in rural Georgia, buddy? <laughs> Show us <Exactly>. those checkers. <laughs> uh, no, that was just like a, a, a cool uh, thing to have, right? At least uh, like to, uh, on the resume, uh, yeah. on the reel. Uh, right? Yeah, it was cool. I, my uh, my uh, ego got a bit deflated after the, the Mickey taking. But no, it was, it was fun. What was happy was there was two kids we selected um, who were part of that video, who came from our community program. And um, they just had a blast. They're obsessed. His, his favorite player was Yaya Torre. And oh. to see this little kid from Harlem and his cousin, Erica, just hanging out with these superstars and just looking at them, they just cannot believe it. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was a special day. We actually did that video the day we, um, we launched the club. Um, uh, we launched the club from where we built that rooftop soccer pitch. So it was a okay. bit of a, it was a special day. Yeah. It was cool. That's amazing. You actually just celebrated another event uh, where you opened another mini pitch. Uh, talk a little bit about how difficult that might be or how different it is to do something like that during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I don't know if you saw you were on the um, virtual ribbon cutting, we had to be quite creative. Yeah. And when we open up these pitches, we, the, a lot of the purposes is one, create awareness about these pitches now exist, but it's also for the community. These are real community assets. And um, the first year we did a poetry contest. So the kids in those schools or in that community um, uh, wrote poetry or a poem to talk about how soccer has impacted their life or um, the benefits of playing soccer. Uh, last year we did the photography contest. You probably might have seen some of the the work on display at, at Flushing Meadows. This year we um, we invited kids to do a design contest. So they went through an iterative process, learning a little bit about how urban design works and that process, and coming up with their own ideas about what they'd like to see happen at their new soccer pitch. Um, so that was cool, and we got to see some of the winners present their findings and some really good ideas. So, yeah, part of this is all about the, the engagement, really making sure the local community know about these pitches. The kids, it's for them. Um, it's for the kids. They are the future, and um, making sure that they feel a part of it and contribute to it and actually have some sense of empowerment. I mean, that's a big part of what we do at the, in City in the Communities. How do we empower kids and communities to lead better, healthier lives through soccer. And there's many things we can do, but soccer's the hook. That's what we've got to respect right. the game. That brings the kids in. But how do we then channel that into doing anything and dreaming and uh, becoming the next leaders in the community? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing like it when it comes to any other uh, sport and and its sense of community. Like well, we've spoken to other uh, people, I, I've you know been a part of other CITC uh, events. Obviously, we had uh, Kwame King on the show yeah. uh, recently, and and uh, let's can you talk a little bit about the the Youth Liter Leadership Council uh, for CITC and 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 that uh, not only that involvement, but it's like we've met several of the people that are involved and the level of of, uh not only commitment uh is is you know you know it's admirable right it, it's For it sure. is there there's so much that they do uh they, they you know whether it's being uh, you know a f kind of uh, helping uh, uh you know the new york co uh, common uh, food pantry and 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 doing yeah. all these things like it, it it seems to be more than simply you know a part-time job or just something to do it is really a, a deep connection in helping out the community yeah yeah this is this is the football effect right the passion that people have and the game brings i mean Thank you, by the way, for the virtual fundraiser. You, you might have mentioned um, Omu Torre. Um, yes. There's a coach who's been with us for 10 years, right? Wow. Some of these coaches every Saturday, even throughout the summer, opening up gyms and running sessions. Um, you know, I, I, I would say, I would start this. It's, it's we're looking at the long term. And in, uh, if you're real about this, you've got to think long term about real, being real with the, the change you want to see happen. And... When we started out with the program, say at the rooftop, we were only serving elementary school kids. The kids would leave and then they'd go into middle schools, but then it was very susceptible to join a gang, right? Uh, and I heard a great comment from one of our community board meetings was that it's easier to join a gang than join a team in our communities. So we listened to the kids and they wanted to come back and see their coach and, and still keep playing as a team. And that's where we got some funding from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office to 
keep these kids together but on Saturday nights when there's usually high levels of crime and uh, we offer soccer. Uh, and so we've expanded that initiative. But from there, we took the kids who are now 16, 17. They wanted to volunteer as coaches. So we said, okay, well, listen, you've got amazing ideas. You really care about the work. You've been affected by it. And you know your community is better than anybody else. So we, we created a youth leadership council. Um, that was founded by a young woman who now works at the Manhattan DA's office. And with the wow. youth leadership council is now steered by Kwame King. And, um, you know, th this is a chance for them to really inform the programs that we do. So it's really, really grassroots, and we want to follow these kids um, and grow with them and make sure that these there's pathways, one, to give back to the game in the community, but also into leadership opportunities and, and college and careers. Um, and so, so this is our program model. This is the pathway. Um, and I, I say I think the big piece of this is how do we identify the 16 to 24-year-olds who really care about the game and give them the tools to help grow it and expand it and make it accessible for everybody? All right. That's yeah. Awesome. I, look, I, I, you know, I play, you know, some Sunday league and I, I, you know, maybe I should participate in some of these coaching sessions. I don't know if Umu offers coaching to adults, but you. I don't mind being, I don't mind to be, you know, being in a group of other 12 year olds yeah. trying to do one V ones working on my game. I'm trying and to if, improve. If there's an eight year old, that's really good. He can, he or she can coach me. I mean, I'm more than, <laughs> I'm more than willing to learn how to play the sport. <laughs> well, you know, this is it, right? I think this is the game is the best teacher at this age. It's all about just a, a, a person who they feel safe and comfortable with. And that's the thing with these pitches. You open up, the kids own the game, anyone can drop in, play with mixed age groups, um, and learn how to get better. You know, you have your time for your formal practice, but this is the idea of the pitches, true pickup soccer culture, where you can, you know, in a, in a vision would be is that every kid in the city can just um, drop out of their apartment or home and, and go play pickup with their friends, right? In a safe environment. And watch yeah, other people get... I, Christian, I know you're a new puppy on him. So am I. I just got an English shepherd. <laughs> oh, amazing. But the best thing, the most fun is going to the dog park and seeing these dogs socialize, right? And, and you know, you throw your dog in there and he meets all these other dogs and you leave him alone and he learns not to bite some you might, dogs. You, you, might, you might be hearing him make noise now. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> he heard dog park and he was like, are we going? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, anyway. there is a, uh, that, that is a cool, uh, uh, the community aspect is obviously the, uh, absolutely crucial and important. And, and look, as, as, a, as a New Yorker and, and even getting to see, you know, uh, I mentioned this before, but even getting to see the, the pitch in my uh, old neighborhood in Sunset Park, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll walk by and see kids playing. And I'm like, man, that I didn't have that when I, when I was a kid and I didn't have that opportunity. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had to figure out other ways to stay out of trouble and stuff like that. So to, to see and meet people that are, are doing the work, you know, these things don't happen. They're not miracles that they don't yeah. happen accidentally. So to see meet people that are doing the work, uh, it's, uh, it's admirable. It's great. So yeah, I, 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 I lots say, of respect to you. No, I, I, and thank you for recognizing it. it's really the people on the front lines doing this. The bone work is every day, obviously different with the pandemic, but truly who are showing up at school. It's not easy. It really isn't easy yeah. going in. You don't know what environment you, you might be coaching in a corridor. You might be in a gym and you might you don't always have access to the mini pitch and showing up every day and doing um, and dealing with the kids and creating a great environment and then to learn um, the skills and healthy eating. It's not easy. Teachers are the most important people in our society. Really. Without a doubt. You know, I, so um, I got a little insight into that. I'm no longer on the field coaching, but I got insight into that. And I think that's where what drove me is one, the game can offer a solution. Um, and two is it just took us into a, another um, space where there's so much more we, we could be doing and whether they're a good soccer player or not is secondary, right? And so it's not just about, um, I want to say, increased access for the competitive kids to play, but feeling safe where if you can't kick a straight ball, it's okay, come and run around and play. And that's okay, and we want you to. And right. so sometimes uh, you can get so caught and lost up in the best kids and the best players and it's poaching and find, develop players, build up their self-esteem and grow. And we've seen it. You know, you can't determine if a kid's going to be a talented professional superstar at seven or not. They're all of these yeah. growth. So 
I agree. And stop putting the kid that sucks in goal, because that's what happened to me every time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, Paul Jeffries. Paul Jeffrey, thank you so much for taking the time. All right, thanks for having us. Take care. All right, look at this. We have two guests on today on NYCFC at What a home. show, huh? This is, I mean, it is a star-studded event. <laughs> uh, yes, we, Wait, we're, who was the other person? Uh, no, you know, <laughs> Paul, Paul did great. Uh, you yeah. guys, look, are, Paul's going to get roasted in this segment. But who are the stars? <laughs> yeah, that's us two. And then <laughs> Thank it's you, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, our, our next guest, we're, we're getting, we're going through the entire front office, okay? Uh-huh. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, uh, NYCFC's uh, 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 ch- chief operating officer and chief commercial officer, uh, please give it up for Matt Goodman, everybody. The Matt, silence, the silence what? is deafening. Yeah. <laughs> was, you I just thought, you can't hear them clapping, but I hear the wooing already. It's great. Uh, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I was either waiting for you to say, uh, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" or Alexis to address uh, you as well. But no, we just sat uncomfortably for a moment. Uh, I was waiting for the applause. I thought that was the time when the applause came, and then when there were no applause, I realized it's not uh, worth applauding. Thank, no, so, seriously, thank you guys for having me. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Uh, now, look, you just joined NYCFC. Uh, why? There's a pandemic, dude. No, I mean, <laughs> what exactly drew you to this club? Um, so, like, when, when you when you are on a whiteboard and you're like drafting the 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 you know the job or role change opportunity, you don't write like join new team, have baby bubble <laughs> pandemic like that's not how the, that's not typically how the playbook goes um but no I, I did i joined the club uh just after the turn of the year uh the first right sixth of january um i had spent the previous five and a half years at the nba came to the club why did i why did i come um brad sims our ceo he and i you know have a history together um I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. I have a tremendous amount of respect for CFG globally. And I think from, from an MLS perspective, having seen the, kind of the proliferation of the league, especially in, in markets that are, that are key targets for the league, right? When you think about Nashville and St. Louis and Sacramento and, and North Carolina and then the legacy clubs, right, that you've got in Dallas and, and Kansas City and other places, you know, and having been to matches over the last five years, you know, the notion of what this thing has been, where it is today, and I think where it goes in the future, um, I think it has tremendous opportunity. And that, frankly, was the reason why why I made the jump. You know, we're NYCFC uh, season ticket holders. We've been supporting the club since it's in Stubby. Okay. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> We're beginning. Okay. Well, we have some complaints, Matt. No. <laughs> no. Add like, them to the list, buddy. Add them to the list. <laughs> when uh, when it comes to the 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 work behind uh, connecting with the community and obviously uh, uh, getting fans uh, excited about uh, about this about the season about even during this uh, uh, pandemic. Why? You know, I I get emails from my ticket rep and, and and staying in touch and things like that, which make me feel good. I'm like, all right, they right. they care that I'm still engaged and watching the team and, and getting invited to events. But uh, given this year, and, and maybe we can talk a little bit about the future, about uh, any plans or, uh, to to build that, that and, and maintain that relationship with NYCFC fans. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, th- th- that's the best part about this business, hands down. Like the very best part about, you know, the team sports and the business side of it is exactly that. Like, it, like it's it's that connectivity to the fans. And, and being in New York City, is is an even is an, is under an even uh, a larger microscope, right? Because like you know whether we talk about the Knicks, the Giants, the Jets, the Nets, whoever it is, you know this is like this is the epicenter of of kind of North American sports or American sports given the number of teams. And what you just said is the thing that is you know one of the most exciting opportunities about NYCFC, right? You've got the MLS at 25 years old relative to the NBA at 75, Major League Baseball at 125, the NFL at 100, you know, and when you think about, you know, the MLS is, you know, like we're in like elementary school Uh in terms of those. And then you get to put us in New York where you've already got a crowded sports landscape. So what are we going to do to differentiate ourselves, right? You've got passionate fans who, you know, who joined us when the club was launched, you know, and, and we've seen, you know, we've seen up and down kind of tick in terms of, 
fan support over the course of time. And those that have been with us since day one, like you guys, like it is our responsibility to make sure that you feel like this is in fact a family, right? It is not just a transaction. It's not just about coming to games. It's not just about sending you letters. Like we, we want there to be a genuine personal connection to this club because that's what it is, right? Like it's different than a, than a traditional North American team between our youth programs, city in the community, um, our academy, that there are so many tentacles to this club and we're still in such an infancy stage of it, but the connectivity to our fan and, and our season ticket member, it's the most important relationship we have because you're our ambassador. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, we, I mean, I, look, I just want to say, I, I'm, I, I want my, my name on the brick on the stadium. That's, oh, uh, that's, uh, that's what's keeping I've, me I've loyal. Been nine months. I don't know what bricks we're talking about, but everybody <laughs> tells me about the bricks. And as some, as somebody who has a brick at Bush stadium in St. Louis, Okay. okay. I get it. Yes. All right. Oh, good. Wow. <laughs> so then maybe you can explain why Provel cheese tastes that way. Uh, <laughs> is it planned? Is that part of the plan? <laughs> this is this is like me and Mark Goodman, my dad, have this like on I'm like, Dad, Emo's pizza is not that good. He's like, yeah. it's got Provel cheese. I'm like, it's not real cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I, I performed at the Helium in St. Louis and the hotel they put us in had emos in the morning for breakfast as part of their buffet. I took two bites and I'm like, I'm going to need seven cups of coffee to get this flavor out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, you can't, you can't get it. Anyway. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It like sticks to your mouth. It's a very it's odd cheese, I'll say. Yeah. Um, why is it gooey when it's cold? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the, the league MLS itself has done some so many incredible things with the Black, uh, Black Lives Matter movement and encouraging a lot of that and also one of nyc's own player uh, sean johnson uh is very vocal and a big big part of the black players for change coalition uh talk a little bit about what uh what the club is doing to help sort of promote and uplift these uh sort of these new ventures that that are helping you know build communities even stronger yeah look i, I mean frankly you know this this is something that that is i think probably long overdue right i mean i think the the fact that that our club in particular has always, you know, has always represented itself as one that believes in that believes in diversity and believes in the city and, and kind of where those two things meet. You know, our our recent relationship that's been formalized with the Jackie Rock Foundation and the way in which that, you know, that we're that we're promoting education, right? For for young people of color, like it is it is by far, and especially in New York City. You know, this is something that to me is it is of the highest level of importance. And I think Sean as an ambassador for our club with, you know, especially with, you know, with the Black Players Coalition, I think is an incredible opportunity for the players to have their voices heard in a year that, you know, that is even more, you know, that, that's even more heightened for any number of reasons. Um, but we as a club, we take this we take this remarkably seriously. And the fact of the matter is. Like it's our responsibility as a team, you know, that has a platform to provide that platform to our fans and to our players. Yeah, I mean, it's you know when we uh, we hosted the the virtual fundraiser uh, for CITC and Brad Sims did uh, bring this up uh, as well, just about how much conversation is going on at the club, uh, you know, uh, about these serious issues. So it, it, it's great to to hear that even internally, uh, th those discussions are going on as well. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the the notion of and we've seen it, we've seen it become obviously it's a it's been a much larger, louder movement, not just in sports, right, but across the entire the, the entire landscape of of you know of the United States over the course of the last call it two to three years, but you know uh, the the need for diversity and inclusion, right, and what that means, right, the definition of what that means, which I think is probably misunderstood by many, um, but is a, is a huge focus for us. You know, and and I, you know, and I've told Brad, you know, when I came from the NBA, you know, I was very fortunate to join the league just as Adam Silver was, you know, was taking over as commissioner and to see how that, you know, how that league was run, to see how Don Garber has run the MLS with such a major emphasis on it. You know, to me, it was and, and we've talked about it like this, like the fact that it should just be a normal operating procedure. Unfortunately, we're not at a place yet where it is. So it has to be, you know, it has to be an initiative and we are fully leaned in on that initiative. 
That's right. amazing. And um, what could we expect for 2021? I mean, other, you know, besides obviously Christian and I doing a live pregame show at the stadium, right? <laughs> right. right next to Ian and Joey and Joe Tolleson. Yeah. I, if, we own home if, plate. <laughs> if we have a live pregame show where fans get to come in 21, God bless you. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's, look, I think that to answer that question, you know, anybody in my business, in our business, who's done this for a long time, like, there's no playbook for this. Yeah. Right. We're all trying to figure it out literally day by day. And I think for 21, all we want to do is be able to provide the safest experience for our fans, right. To not leave anything to chance and to bring back that same level of enthusiasm and passion in a way that again, that everyone feels safe um, and, and gives us the best chance at, at winning a cup on the pitch. Uh, but first and foremost, we got to think about fan safety, right? Of course. I mean, that's, Absolutely. That's what we got to do. Nice. All right. Uh, well put. Okay. Uh, Matt Goodman, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I'm, I'm excited. Hopefully we, we can meet each other soon and maybe hopefully we can be at a, at a game. Uh, hopefully we can wonderful. be celebrating goals because uh, there's a lot to look forward to next year. I can't wait. Guys, I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate everything you do. Stuff is hilarious. Um, so please keep, keep the support going and keep the narrative rolling. Absolutely. Cheers, thank well. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, baby, let's do a little match preview presented by EA Sports. He's like, yo, who's next? Thank you so much to Paul Jeffries and Matt Goodman for being on NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by Elima. Yeah, that was exciting. It's uh, look, we uh, it, it's good to talk to the people that are that are doing the work. You know, you, you yeah. know, connected with the community. We all with this. We want we want to be back in the stadium. We want our own stadium. We want mm-hmm. all these things, and it's, and these are the people that are involved in making these things happen. So we, it's good to f- have someone to yell at. You know, it feels good. It's nice, and now we know them, so we could text them like, "Yo, what's going on in the community?" You know? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm a season ticket holder. Answer me, okay? Yeah. Don't you dare block my number. First time, long time. <laughs> um, okay, so look, uh, we should look. Uh, forward to uh, the the next uh, match, which is uh, going to be against uh, the Montreal Impact. That's uh, right. It, it's been uh, the the last couple results have not fared well. They have not been positive, but we have to look forward. Uh, we still have a a you know playoff positioning uh, to fight for. There's a couple games left uh, before uh, the playoffs. We have to make sure we secure a playoff spot and hopefully in those top six, right? We don't want to have to uh, play that in, in that playing game. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we definitely, but against Montreal, this feels like a very, a very winnable match. Of course, but Montreal, remember, they're in ninth currently. We're in sixth currently. So they're coming in here. They know if they win, they knock us down and they move up. So yeah. this is a big opportunity. They're going to come in all guns blazing, and they just beat Inter Miami. So they're feeling good. We've had a kind of a bit of a rough patch over the last three matches, one draw and two losses. So this is a great opportunity to turn it around, especially against a team like Montreal, which are susceptible. You know what I mean? They're not necessarily world beaters. Yeah, it's it's tough. There's going to be a couple of players uh, missing because of yellow card accumulation. We already are dealing with the injuries. People will definitely have to step up. I mean, mm-hmm. th- this is going to be an opportunity for probably, uh, you know, the, the non-traditional goal scorers to to step up and, and hopefully create some chances. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what it is like because it's going to be uh, different people getting opportunities. OK, so that that match uh, will be uh, on the 24th at 730 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and as always, you can watch on the Yes Network. And uh, you can listen to the radio broadcast on nycfc.com slash radio. Uh, so uh, a, a, another one in the books. We did it again, Alexis. Another hot Buddy, show. We're almost too good at this. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> you know? okay. uh, yeah. You know what? There, there's something that, you know, we've done. This is uh, now our 13th episode. It's gotten to our heads. Yeah, dude, we we should be designated personalities. <laughs> <laughs> okay, MLS added to the roster. I, you got, we got, we need giggle uh, accumulation money or whatever. <laughs> That's your game. That's what it's going to be renamed. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so everybody, thank you again for tuning into uh, another episode of NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Jimador.